students now we go into the most important part we have seen how to conserve water we have seen about rainwater harvesting we have seen about dams okay but we cannot build a dam in our own homes isn't it but then here is something that's the most important that we can think of it is wastewater recycling see we see that there are when even when the garbage wala comes what do you do you have the dry waste you have the wet waste but there is something that he whatever he segregates in the dry waste when if you observe you'll see that there are some of the objects some of the things that can be recycled and that is always kept separate and he can send it for recycling yes some of the plastic some of the glass items some of the metallic cans all these can be recycled okay same thing happens when you go for shopping you get payback points what do you do with that payback points you can reclaim you can claim that money later same thing with the water also okay now because water is becoming precious and precious day by day usage is more and the wastage is also more we don't think about the preciousness the how precious this water is okay we should really start thinking about it start acting for it so that is how this water recycling comes so we can claim back this water and we can reuse this water so how to use it and for what all can we use this water that is the main point that we need to know okay and there's something like what are the what type of water that we can recycle okay there are so much of water wastage if you just go travel on a road you would see taps just leave be left let open and there is leaking taps where water is constantly spilling out apart from that whenever you see people washing clothes or washing uh, a car or, you know you use so much of water and it's all going waste now come on this kind of water that comes from the domestic usage like washing clothes okay washing you utensils okay and then from the industries usually water is used in the industries as coolants now these cooling water after some time it can be used again because there is nothing wrong in using it okay so such kind of water is all recycled not only that even the sewage water is getting recycled and there are several stages of treatment before it is fit for to be used for other purposes okay that's what we are going to see now okay and there is something called gray water it's not gray in color it is g r a y okay gray water this again this is the water but it is non potable potable means what something that's fit for drinking that's called as potable water okay this is non potable so we cannot use it for drinking but this water can be used for different things and this gray water comes from the industries from the domestic things like the sinks that you know we give out through the utensils washing of utensils washing of clothes all these things come under this gray water this is non potable but it can be used for many many things okay yeah now let's move on to why should we uh, no, before that let us see the treatment stages of wastewater treatment this is almost similar to how water is treated when we get collect water from the river beds or from reservoirs what do we do we collect that we don't directly it doesn't directly come to our taps it is not potable before reaching the homes it has to undergo a series of treatments the same way this wastewater also has to undergo a series of treatments here now when you come to this actually the first there are three stages main stages are three the first one is primary treatment okay secondary treatment and the last one is tertiary treatment before we make it usable we have to let this waste water undergo these three steps primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment now let's just have a look at this see here this is the water that comes here basically in the primary treatment if you see it is nothing but grit and screening 
filtering grit and screening grit is for the heavier particles screening and grit basically and it will sediment so all the sedimentation happens here in the primary treatment stage okay so that's about the primary treatment okay so this is for screening and also grit for the heavier particles then we have the secondary treatment this is biological oxidation so here what happens you take microorganisms these microorganisms will work upon organic waste so what happens these organic waste will start breaking down so as the organic substances start breaking down it releases carbon dioxide okay so carbon dioxide is let into the air but it slowly gets oxidized and a sludge is formed which will settle down you can see this sludge tanks here so after the primary thing this biological filters are there see it comes through the biological filters it settles down and then again it forms the sludge okay after the sludge comes the tertiary so usually sometimes when you see uh, little by little screening will happen little by little all the particles will be purified even then by the end there will be something that will escape okay like that here there are some pathogens pathogens means disease causing organisms okay they escape not only pathogens you have unwanted color wastewater remember it's wastewater from the industries from homes so naturally the color you will not have the color of water but you need that color right so if you somebody gives you coffee and say come on you have a cup of coffee and if it is it is uh, green in color of course green tea is there but green coffee no you would like to you imagine yourself the coffee brown that color is there in your mind right like that here also the water color should be maintained and for that for in the tertiary treatment we have something like activated charcoal so this would adsorb adsorb is different from absorb adsorb means like you put something on the top on the surface it will just take it has a lot of holes pores that will just adsorb all the unwanted color unwanted smell everything will go with the activated charcoal okay so and there is also the main thing that happens here is disinfection how do you do that with chlorine ozone you have ozonized water if you take mineral water when mineral water is sold and you take it for drinking if you just have a look at the bottle you can see it's ozonized it's uv treated these are different ways of treating the water so this is the tertiary treatment of water so by the end of all this you also have a stockpile of fertilizers or biomanures that come from this along with that there is some the water that is let out into the uh, into different uses okay now let's move on to the how this wastewater is made use of now let's see why we should recycle water see you are a generation who will always ask why should i do this why should i do this why should i study like this why should i do this okay that why 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 that's always there in your heart right now the same question we are going to answer for water also why should we recycle water there is water in the sea there's water in the ocean why should we recycle okay now let's see the main thing is conservation of water to conserve see when we see the usable water we don't use the water from the ocean because it's saline no it is it contains a lot of minerals like sodium chloride is there calcium is there magnesium is there apart from that so many other things um, so many other elements are there so it's not usable of course now they are coming with uh, different devices and patterns and the methods and uh, where you can convert the sea water into soft water that's also coming up very fast it's coming up anyway this wastewater can be reduced 
isn't it? Yeah, so the first reason why we should recycle water is to conserve water. Whatever little water, usable water that's available to us, it is our responsibility to conserve it. Okay, so that's the first reason. The second one is, see, if we are going to use the same nice soft water for industries, for cooling purposes, for um, so many other things like for agriculture, for washing the vehicles, for everything if you are going to use this we are bringing down the available portable water okay so what we can do we can maintain the portable water portable water is the water that is available for drinking purposes okay so we can maintain that okay then when there is this water that is recycled what we can do we can enhance wetlands in the previous video, you would have watched about wetlands, right? Wetlands are a great blessing for the shores, right? They can prevent soil erosion. They can protect the land from all these natural disasters like tsunamis. And they can be a breeding ground for a wide variety of plants and animals. But that such wetlands can use this recycled water. So, we are enhancing the wetlands that also can be done. Then, we also saw that these things settle down. Okay. So, what happens? This contains, this wastewater also contains high levels of nutrients like phosphates, nitrates, which are very very important for plants okay now these things will come down as bio manure and fertilizers so it's not going waste isn't it see it's just water that would have just been washed into the ocean and it would have gone and mingled in no time but what are we doing if we recycle we are going to enhance wetlands we are going to take this nutrients and we are going to make it as fertilizers and also we are going to increase the amount of portable water there are countries where there is no drinking water there's acute shortage of drinking water and people just take cans and cans and they are given it on ration okay each person gets about five liters that includes cooking and drinking can you imagine okay so it's very 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 precious this water is very precious so this recycling gives you so many advantages also okay but there is also some disadvantages of recycling water only the major point of disadvantage is it still contains some pathogens What are pathogens? Pathogens are disease causing organisms. Okay. Now, actually, in the tertiary treatment, we saw that they are subjected to chlorination, disinfection. Of course, we can't use a lot of chemicals. Remember, again, what will happen? These chemicals will go and contaminate the soil. Soil will become polluted. Okay. There's a limit with which we can use it. And so, we do use chlorine and we do use chemicals to disinfect. In spite of that, there are some disease causing pathogens that escape, they don't die. Okay, so this is the threat that we have. By chance, it goes in and it can cause havoc to the animals also. Okay, so that is the only disadvantage of this recycled water. Now, let's move on to the uses of recycled water. Okay, now going to the last part of this recycled water, we go to the uses of recycled water. Okay, now coming to this, let's go to this chart, this picture, which gives us a glimpse of the uses that we can have. Okay, one is for the industries. For cooling, uh, usually water is used as a coolant. Okay, because in industries, the temperature could be very, very high some 300 400 degrees celsius or it can sometimes go to 1000 and 2000 degrees celsius so we need to keep it under control and for that we need water as a coolant okay so for that we can use this recycled water then of course for the irrigation 
because in the case of irrigation now now that you saw that all the minerals and everything else is removed then it can be used for irrigation then for recreation so you have these uh, fountains and parks so there we can always make use of this water okay then you have this some other non potable use like you have uh, construction activities there also we can use this recycled water if you see these construction activities they require large amounts of water so for construction activities also we can use this recycled water so these are the different uses that we have for recycled water and plus it also gives you the groundwater table intact it keeps it intact and it recharges the groundwater table okay so these are the uses now let's move on to the last part of this chapter that is dry composting toilets this also having the conservation of water in mind we learn about this this is called dcts okay so what they do usually what do we do when we use the toilets a lot of water is used for flushing out okay now this water is completely saved in of course in rural areas and in places where there is acute shortage of water they go in for this dry composting toilets where the uh, human excreta is just uh, uh, put in into a dry area and every time it is covered with soil so what happens is the slowly it starts disintegrating and it also forms bio manure so there is no smell but there is biomania at the same time no chemicals are used no need of any chemical to be to clean it up or to disinfect because it's automatically naturally getting disintegrated and decomposed so there is no there are no chemicals that are used and water conservation this is the main thing water conservation happens with dcts if we do this dcts one thing that we observe is again like when we built small dams the cost was very less same thing happens here there is low cost for dcts all right so in this video we saw about wastewater that's being recycled and why it should be recycled and from what are the sources from which we can recycle it okay but there is there are disadvantages in recycling it and also how we can conserve water through this dcts also okay if you like you can always like it share it and subscribe for this and wait for more videos till then bye bye